Red is a medical herbalist who lives in the border town of Zoltan. This town is far away from other big towns and has no strategic value. So, life here is simple and quite detached from the outside world. This place is perfect for Red as he wants to open an apothecary and live a simple life. In this world, every person has a unique divine blessing, which is basically a superpower from God. A little kid asks Red what his divine blessing is, but Red has a secret past and does not reveal what his power is. You see, Red's real name is Gideon Ragnason, and he was once a powerful warrior and a member of the Heroes group. One day, the hero's second-in-command, Ares, asks him to break his magic shield with a simple bronze sword. Red is unable to do so. So, Ares teases him, saying that Red is useless to the hero and should not even be in the group. His divine blessing is unable to support the group in their battles, and the hero has to constantly save him, making him a liability. The truth is, the hero is actually Red's own sister. Seeing how much of a burden he is, Red leaves all his equipment and leaves the group, pretending that he went to check the Demon Lord's army, and that was how he came here to Zoltan. One day, a dangerous owlbear appears near their village. Albert, a B-rank adventurer, asks Red's help in tracking it down, but he declines because he does not want to stand out and accidentally reveal his past. Later, one of the village kids, Tanta, catches a unique fever that might actually cause him to become blind. To cure Tanta, Red will need to collect some super rare herbs. Red uses some physical enhancements and rushes into the forest. He finds some of the herbs, but a fire has been started by Albert to trap the owlbear. Suddenly, the owlbear attacks him, but Red is actually way too strong for it and kills it in one stroke. Later, Albert and the other adventurers find the body. Everyone believes that Albert killed it, but Albert himself is suspicious that it was someone else. Red brings the herb back to Tanta, and the doctor makes the cure for him. Tanta's uncle, Gons is very grateful, and offers to give him any reward he wants. Since Gons is a carpenter, Red asks him to build a house for him, which he will use as a medical store. Four months later, another adventurer named Rit comes to Zoltan. The clerk of the Adventurer's Guild tells her all about Red, and how he recently saved a boy by gathering rare herbs even when the forest was on fire. Rit is impressed by this story, and by his kindness. Meanwhile, Red's own medical store is finally complete. He paid for all the building materials, and Gans did the construction for free. That way, he could open his shop with just the money he had saved up. Everyone in Zoltan came to congratulate him. One day, Rit comes to visit him in his shop and calls him by his real name Gideon. Apparently, they know each other. Turns out, Rit's real name is Rizlet, and she is the second princess of a major military power. The people of her kingdom were starting to support her instead of her brother, the crown prince. So she decided to leave before it caused a civil war. Now, she's pretending to be a B-rank adventurer out here. When she hears the reason why Red is here, she becomes furious at Ares. But Red says that the hero and the party are doing even better without him. After calming down, Red and Rit recount their adventures together, how they met, and how they fought together. Back then, Rit and her people were too proud to ask for help from the hero's party, even when they were attacked by the Demon Lord's forces. However, Rit was defeated by the demons and captured. But Red came to her rescue. They fought back the demon general until Red's sister, the hero Ruti, comes and saves them. Later, Rit is faced with the death of her comrades for the first time in her life and does not know how to cope. But Red reminds her that she must stand as the beacon of hope for her people. Otherwise, even if they defeat the remaining Demon Lord army, her people will still see this as a bad day. So, Rit retained her will to fight and became a hero to her people. In the present, Rit asks if she can stay with Red and work with him. Despite some hesitation, Red agrees and takes her in. Elsewhere, Ares brings a new member named Tisse to join the hero's party. Tisse has the divine blessing of an assassin. The next day, Red wakes up to the sight of Rit's beautiful milk melons. Best morning view ever. Then they go around town, buying a bed and other necessities for Rit. During that time, Red thinks about how every person in this world has their own divine blessing. And the only way to level up these blessings is to kill other people who have divine blessings. They see a large kid with a fighter's blessing beating up Tanta and his friend Al, short for Albert. After scaring the big bully away, Red tells Al that people's blessings can also affect their personality. People with assassin blessings can become evil, and people with brawler blessings can become super arrogant. Al becomes sad, saying that he does not want a divine blessing. But Red manages to reassure him that he will be able to control his blessing if he is strong enough. To make their medical shop more popular, Red has created a painkiller that is not addictive. 
They go to show it to the Zoltan administration, but the person responsible, Dan, yells at them. Red and Rit are very confused. So they go to the captain who says that Dan recently approved the use of a medicine. However, it turned out to have addictive properties, and people are now using it as drugs all over town. Everyone has been blaming Dan for approving this medicine, but Rit is a princess and has connections with the captain, so they get the painkiller approved. Next, they make another medicine for colds and fevers. In order to make it more appealing, Red uses his cooking skills and makes it into a cookie. It's yummy. Since this medicine does not have the normal bitter taste, it becomes an instant hit. Meanwhile, the hero's party has been looking for one of the special weapons of the demon lord in the desert. However, they have been having trouble negotiating with the desert dwellers. The best fighter in the group, Danan, gets frustrated because this type of issues never came up when Red was in the group. He scolds Ares for banishing Red and goes out to find him. Ares tries to argue with him, but Rudy comes and stops him, giving Danan her permission to go find Red. Elsewhere, Red is waking up to that beautiful view again. That day, Rit starts craving some mead so she goes out to get some of it. Just then, Albert comes in, demanding to know if he killed the owlbear earlier and if he's hiding something. He starts to threaten Red, but just then, Rit comes rushing into the room and knocks him down. Red stops her, and Albert runs away. That night, Red and Rit have a good night with good food and good mead. The next day, Rit tells Red the real reason why she wanted to drink mead. In her country, newlyweds have a tradition of drinking mead together. Red is really shocked but he smiles and accepts her tradition. Meanwhile, the hero's party is still struggling to find the demon lord's weapon. The crusader, Theodora asks Tisse if she regrets joining this party as they have been facing failure after failure, and the party members are uncomfortable with each other. Theodora says that these issues never came up when Red was here. Back in Zoltan, Red and Rit are visited by Galatine, a senior officer at the Adventurer's Guild. Galatine demands to see Rit, but they make them wait since the shop hasn't reached opening time yet. However, a member of the Thieves' Guild offers Red one elven coin, which is worth 10,000 normal gold coins for him to sever his ties with Rit. But, Red flat out refuses. Galatine and the rest of the Adventurer's Guild members also offer Rit lots of money and titles if she will quit working with Red and return to becoming an adventurer. She also refuses them flat out. Then, Red gives her a bracelet with a priceless amber stone, Rit becomes really happy, and thinks that this is a dream come true for her, living with Red like this. She never thought that this could be possible. She thinks back to the past when the Demon Lord was attacking her country. They needed to go and get help from a neighboring kingdom. On the way, they pass by a village, where an elf named Yarendrala got super close to Red, making Rit very jealous. After all, Yarendrala and Red are old friends. She has a blessing that allows her to talk to the trees of the forest. They need Yarendrala to pass a dangerous forest to get to the other country. Rit was getting jealous of how close Red was with Yarendrala and she senses this. So she takes Rit to a little bath and talks about Rit's crush on Red. Yarendrala says that she is an elf and will live way longer than humans. So she avoids falling in love with humans. She says that she respects Red but does not see him as a lover. She says that Red does not have a powerful fighting blessing, but his responsibilities in the group are far bigger than what is seen openly. Everyone depends on him without realizing it. She says that Rit should support him, and the two of them will be a good fit for each other. They finally reach the neighboring country where the demon army is also attacking. Red takes a risky move by being the distraction while Ruti mows down the enemies one by one, shocking Rit. Red also survives his task, and Ruti hugs him with happiness. Rit realizes that Red and Ruti have a strong bond, and she did not want to come in between them. So she did not join the hero's party. But here in Zoltan, they are together again. Later, a member of the Thief's Guild tells her to get back into being an adventurer, or he'll tell her family that she's living out here in Zoltan. But Rid is very cool about it. She doesn't care what her family says as long as she's living here with Red. Meanwhile, Rudy starts feeling depressed due to her brother's absence. Back when Aris told her that Red ran away, she did not believe him and suspected that he did something. So she killed Aris in one shot. But Ruti remembered her duty as the hero and healed Ares again. One day, Red and the village doctor find a man who has been poisoned due to a drug overdose. Red uses his potion skills to save the man. The doctor says that this overdose is probably from that recently approved medicine, the one that got Dan into trouble. The doctor thinks that they will see more cases like this. Rit wonders who's behind all this, but Red does not want to get involved. Instead, he takes Rit on a barbecue picnic to the river. They swim, drink wine, and have a good time. Then they finally confess their feelings for each other and kiss. Elsewhere, the hero's party is still in the desert. 
Tissé asks Ruti why she never sleeps. She replies that she has the hero's blessings which provides her resistance to everything, external or internal. She does not feel hot, cold, exhaustion, thirst or hunger. She never has to sleep or eat or drink. But as a side effect, she does not have normal human emotions like happiness, sadness, fear, anger, etc. Back in Zoltan, a man runs into their shop while bleeding. Red takes care of him while Rit goes to see what happened. She finds members of Albert's party have gone crazy and they're attacking normal people. Rit fights them back and Albert finishes the job by headshotting them all. Albert says that he does not know what happened to them and Rit gets angry at him for killing them instead of just knocking them out. Meanwhile, Danan reaches Zoltan looking for Red. He runs into a hooded figure named Bowie, who also claims to be looking for Red. Bowie offers to search together. That night, Red thinks back to his childhood with Ruti. Even when dangerous storms scared everyone, Ruti alone would be unafraid. The two of them would spend quality time together, promising to always be there for each other. Back to the present, the doctor brings Al to Red's home and he is bloody and injured. Al wakes up and says that the bully from earlier, a Demi came to his house with an axe and attacked his parents. Red and the doctor rush to his home and thankfully, Al's parents are still alive. The bully, a Demi, is actually the son of the city's captain of the guards. The people believe that they are sheltering Ademi, and a lot of chaos begins. The people even use Al's parents as a figurehead to fight against the city guard and to bring Ademi to justice. While that is happening, Al asks Rit to teach him how to fight with a sword so that he can improve his weapon's master's blessing. So, Rit does her best. Suddenly, Gans comes to them with the bad news that the town guard took Tanta away. Rit uses her connections to get an audience with the captain of the town's guard and Ademi's father, Moen. Moen claims that his son Ademi could not have been the attacker as his blessing is that of a brawler, meaning he would never use an axe. Tanta also backs him, saying that some time ago, Ademi came to him and apologized for hitting him. His blessing was changing his personality, but he was trying his best to become an honorable soldier and join the city guards. After the kids are gone, Red considers the possibility that Ademi was under the influence of the drug, but Moen gets super offended hearing this. Elsewhere. Al is sitting in the medical shop when a stranger comes in. Much later, Red also arrives and they train for a while. Then Al tells him about the stranger, who gave him a red-bladed weapon. Meanwhile, Rit goes after some drug dealers at Moen's request. However, she gets caught in a trap and gets surrounded by several men. Just as it gets bad, Danan arrives and saves her. They look at the men that just attacked her and see stalker demons on their heads. Danan says that he was supposed to bring Red back to the hero, but seeing how Red seems happy here, he has changed his mind. He asks Rit not to tell Red that he's in Zoltan. Rit goes back home and Red shows her the sword that Al got. She uses her magic detection and finds out that there is a spell on this sword that allows the magic caster to see the location of this sword. All around town, there is more and more unrest as the people protest against the violence happening around the city and demand a Demi and the other violent people be brought to justice. Meanwhile, Ruti and her party reach the place they were looking for and come face to face with an extremely powerful gargantuan demon. They struggle really hard to fight it. Ares almost gets hit but Ruti saves him, reminding him that this is just like how she used to save Red. Ares becomes embarrassed. After they finally defeat the demon, they find the previous demon lord's weapon. It's an airship that they can use to travel wherever they want. Tissé asks Ruti if she wants to use this airship to find her brother. But Ruti says that she must not, as she has her hero duty to fulfill. Back in Zoltan, Red and Rit get a double bed, and they discover the joys of sleeping together. One day, some thugs ambush Al using the locate spell on the sword. But it turns out to be Rit with the sword. She knocks them all out, and then has to fight an axe demon next. Meanwhile, Al is back at the medical shop when members of the Thieves Guild come and kidnap him. They take him to their leader, an orc named Big Hawk who says that he's the one flooding the market with the drugs that's been causing so much trouble. It's called the Devil's Blessing, and it actually gives you a second, more dangerous blessing, while suppressing their original blessing. Then, Big Hawk brings in Ademi, whom he has captured. Ademi admits that he took the drug because he wanted to be a fine warrior like his father. Big Hawk takes them outside where lots of protesters are getting ready to fight against the town guard. He says that the town guard protected Ademi because his father is the captain. Then he gives Al a sword to kill Ademi and bring justice to his family. Big Hawk says that this will start the fires of revolution and the people celebrate with him. But Al is not going to do such a thing. 
so Big Hawk reminds him that Ademi tried to kill his parents. If Al kills him, then his divine blessings will grow much stronger. Al takes the sword, raises it, and brings it down on Ademi, but he only cuts the rope. So one of the men pulls out his axe, which causes Ademi to become crazy, and he grabs the axe. Big Hawk says that Ademi will kill Al unless Al kills him first. Suddenly Red arrives at the scene as he has been hiding there. He knocks out Ademi and escapes with Al. Later, Big Hawk and his men find him along with Albert. It is revealed that Big Hawk has actually been taken over by a contract demon named Belial, who is causing all this stuff. Albert has also become obsessed with joining the hero's party. So in order to become stronger, he also made a contract with Belial. He attacks Red, but he easily cuts off his hand. The town guard arrives and arrests them all. Meanwhile, Al and Ademi go to the protesters and tell them everything about Big Hawk and the drugs. He says that he forgives Ademi, meaning the protesters have no reason to fight anymore. They all go home peacefully. Later, Red and Rit spend a nice time in the tub. She asks him if he'd rather go with Ruti and be a hero again, but he replies that being here with her is all that he ever wants. Elsewhere in prison, Bowie visits Big Hawk. The demon inside Big Hawk, Belial, immediately recognizes Bowie as Shisandan, a demon general who was supposed to have been killed by Ruti. Belial breaks his contract with Big Hawk, and then goes to Albert. He forces Albert to make a new contract with him, and they go to Ruti. However, she pulls out her sword at them. Back in Zoltan, Al joins a group of D-rank adventurers, and they go off on their own adventures. The next day, Ruti and Tisse leave everyone behind and take the airship. Ares just cannot believe his eyes. Theodora finds the hero's badge behind, wondering why Ruti would leave it. Meanwhile, Bui joins the Adventurer's Guild of Zoltan, registering as the first B-rank adventurer since Albert's departure. Elsewhere, Ruti tells Tisse to go towards Zoltan to find a medicine maker. Turns out, she ate the Devil's Blessing because Belial told her that it would decrease her normal divine blessing and give her a new blessing. Ruti now wants a steady supply of this drug. She commands Tisse to treat her like a normal adventurer, as she does not want anyone to know that she's the hero. They park the airship in a secluded area near Zoltan. Then, they change into normal traveler's clothes and go into town. On the outskirts, a stupid and overconfident knight is blocking the bridge, demanding payment. So, Ruti just throws him into the river. Later that night, Tisse runs into Red in a roadside food stall, and they get to talking. They silently look over each other's physical looks and come to the conclusion that the other person is a professional. That night, Tisse informs of this man to Ruti and asks her to be careful. Also, the alchemist that Ruti is looking for is apparently in prison, so she will need to conduct a prison break to free this man. She prepares for the prison break while imagining Red giving her pieces of advice. Meanwhile, Red and Rit are requested by a fairy dragon to heal a water archfey. She seems to be under some curse that hampers her spiritual energy. So, Red gives her something to counter it. That night, Ruti and Tisse break into the prison and take Godwin, the alchemist who made the drugs for Big Hawk. They need medicines for Godwin, so they go to the next medical shop in town, Red's shop. And there, Ruti finally meets Red and gets to hug him. Red finally gets to explain to Ruti why he left the group. Ruti does not blame him at all seeing that the actually guilty person here is Ares. She asks him to join the party again, but Red says that he has someone here he needs to be with. So, Ruti also decides to move into Zoltan. Red and Rit are shocked at first, but they accept her decision. As Ruti returns back to her hotel room, she feels a sudden weakness. This is probably because she is going against her divine blessing of being her hero. She drinks more of the drug which will weaken her blessing. Later, Godwin tells them that he will need a functioning workshop to make the drugs. Ruti and Tisse decide to look for some elven ruins on the outskirts of Zoltan. Ruti also tries to help out in the medicine shop, but her cold, emotionless nature scares away potential customers. So, Red takes her around town to make her familiar with the people. Despite her strange nature, she manages to earn the interest of the people. Red assures her, saying that she's his pride and joy. Meanwhile, Theodora and Ares are tracking down Ruti using Albert's information. Albert is still obsessed with Red and why Red never bothered to become a bigger champion despite clearly being a powerful warrior. Theodora explains that people are not slaves to their blessings. Just because they are meant to do great things does not mean they should be obsessed with doing those great things. She says that free will is more important than divine blessings. Back in Zoltan, the three girls take a bath together. There, Rudy talks about a part of her past when she was just five years old but faced with the responsibility of saving a child from a giant monster. She wanted to save herself, 
but her hero's blessing meant she had to prioritize saving another person's life over her own. Despite being hurt several times, she fought back against the giant monster. All the people called her a creep behind her back so she just wanted to die there, but Red arrived just in time and killed the beast. Then, he hugged her while crying. She also admits that she was jealous of Rit because she had the freedom to laugh and live while enjoying everything that life had to offer while also being close to Red. She needs someone to save her. Tisse realizes this and decides to do something to save the hero whom she respects very much. The next day, Tisse tells everything about Belial, the contract demon to Red and Rit. Red says that Ruti won't become addicted to the drug because her blessing grants her immunity. But the drug tends to weaken a person's previous blessing which means at some point, she might end up becoming addicted. They decide to help Ruti and Godwin create the drug for now. Meanwhile, Ares, Theodora and Albert also arrive at Zoltan. Suddenly, Red runs into Danan. Theodora and Albert see this, and they immediately become invisible. Danan tells Red that he's a powerful man who needs to come back to the group, but Red says that he has found his purpose here. He also tells about Ruti's desire to quit her hero's duties, because it's making her miserable. Danan says that he'll support her decision. He goes to Ares' hotel room, pretending to look for Ruti. He takes Ares to Red's medical shop, where Ares destroys all the furniture and belongings like a wild dog. But perhaps, this Danan is actually fake. The real Danan is actually with Red and he tells him that the demon Shisandan is alive. Shisandan also ate Danan's hand. Just then, they see Ares and the fake Danan riding a dragon and flying towards the elven ruins where Ruti is supposed to be. Red runs to Rit and Tisse and informs them about Shisandan. Then he goes forward to the elven ruins. There, he finds Godwin working on the drugs. Red shows Ruti a medicine that he has been working on as well to suppress people's blessings. But it's toxic and does not seem to work with the hero's blessing. Ruti asks why he's doing this for her. After all, he has always wanted to defeat the Demon Lord and bring peace to the world. Doing this will only stop Ruti from fulfilling her duties. Red replies that he just wants to protect her. No matter what decision she makes to continue her hero duties or not, he will support her. If he can decide to live his life the way he wants to, then Ruti should also be allowed to do the same. Rit and Tisse arrive to give their support. Then, Ruti says that she has suddenly developed another blessing which has no name, but it's helping her suppress the effects of the hero's blessings. Just then, Ares arrives and tells Ruti to take up her hero's duty and go defeat the demon lord with him. Thinking that Red is stopping her, he even attacks him. So in return, Ruti stabs him. She heals Red and takes him away. Seeing this, Shisandan changes his form to Bui and offers to help Ares. He says that these ruins have the weapon of the first hero. If he finds it and gives it to Ruti, then she will rejoin him. The others find out that Shisandan is here. So, they decide to do something about it. Ares and Shisandan reach a secret chamber, but Danan arrives in time and confronts them. Danan says that ever since Shisandan ate his right hand, he has been training his left hand to near perfection. Then, he uses his skills to beat the crap out of him. So Ares attacks him, and Shisandan uses this distraction to stab him and cause an explosion inside of him. Shisandan takes his actual demon form and uses all his weapons to fight him. Danan deflects them, but ultimately gets stabbed by one sword. He dies smiling. Ares is shocked at himself because he feels very calm at having betrayed a comrade. They go into the inner chamber where they find five more of the hero's special sword. Shisandan says that the one Ruti is carrying is actually a copy, and these swords are the real ones. He says that the hero Ruti is also just a copy of the first hero, containing the soul of the first hero. To bring Ruti back to the hero's path, Ares must give her the real sword and destroy any connection she has to normal life, that is, Red. The hero's group enters the chamber and they get into a fight. Meanwhile, Danan is still alive. Albert and Theodora arrive, and they give him a healing potion to drink. Then suddenly, Theodora jumps into the battle against Ruti and puts chains on Rit. Then, she starts fighting Ruti. Theodora also believes that Ruti must fulfill her duty of being the hero and saving lives. Ruti asks why she must save the lives of people she hasn't even met. Red must make the choice of saving his sister Ruti or his love Rit. Rit says that Ruti should not be burdened by her own blessing like that. Theodora reminds her that her own country was saved by the hero. But Rit says no. Her country was saved by the combined efforts of everyone, including the hero's group members and her own country's soldiers. Suddenly Red kills the dragon and saves Rit. Ruti also slices Theodora, but Ares traps them in a metal box and sends them falling to their death. 
Aris laughs like a maniac and also attacks Tisse, but Tisse is determined to do anything for the happiness of Rudy, whom she has considered to be her best friend. Meanwhile, Danan is just below, and he uses his powers to break the box and send Red and Rit back up. Then Red quickly rushes forward and chops off both of Aris' hands so he won't be able to fight nor heal himself. Meanwhile, Shisandan is overpowering Ruti with those special swords of the hero. During the battle, her sword breaks. So she takes one of those hero's swords and finally kills Shisandan. The moment she grabs the sword, she feels a strange feeling inside her. Her hero's blessing starts becoming very strong again. She goes back up and then tries to slice Red, but Tisse comes in between and saves him. She begs Ruti not to do this and becomes unconscious. From the looks of it, Ruti seems to have become cold and emotionless again. Ruti attacks Red, but he traps her sword in his simple bronze sword and knocks it away. Rudy comes back to her senses and hugs Red while crying. Tisse is still injured so Rudy tries to heal her with her hero's blessing, but for some reason, it stops working. Theodora comes forward and heals Tisse with her powers. Theodora says that she won't ask for forgiveness, as she still stands by what she believes. But Albert begs them to forgive her, as she's also a true hero, with strong beliefs for the sake of humanity. Ruti says that she may have the hero's blessings, but the one who deserves to be the hero is Theodora, as she's constantly fighting for the sake of the world without any selfish thoughts. Red also says that it's not physical strength or a divine blessing that makes a hero, but character. Theodora accepts the fact that Ruti will never walk the hero's path again. They settle into their normal lives again, and Ruti starts feeling heat, cold, and everything. But most importantly, she feels emotions. Turns out the second blessing that Ruti said that she got, it was a power called Ruler, which allows her to control other blessings. She's using it to suppress the hero's blessings. She decides to start a farm to grow medical herbs, and Tisse will help her. Sometime later, they hold a funeral for Ares. That night, Rid admits that she's afraid she might lose Red in light of all that happened recently. But Red assures her that he would never leave her, that he needs her in his life. That night, they finally do the honka honka and make future plans to live together and grow old together. The next day, Red shows Rudy around town and even buys her a cute little ornament. Then they lie down and enjoy the peaceful life that they worked hard to get. But Ruti has also taken the job of an adventurer, and she occasionally goes around taking dangerous tasks to protect the people around her. Now she's not fulfilling a role, but actually doing things out of her own free will. Far away, Godwin runs into Yarandrala and tells her about Red, Rit, and Ruti's new and peaceful life in Zoltan, so she also decides to join them. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.